Good morning. It's another edition of THG News Today. Hope that you're up and ready to go. It's a beautiful Tuesday. It's 3rd October. My name is Mervyn Hanley. The news this morning is brought to you the kind compliments of Carl and Sons on St. Martin. And I'll be right back with THG News Today. Carl and Sons have been serving the people of St. Martin for over 40 years. And the food and service get better and better. From early morning, customers flock to the bakery for their favorite sandwiches, cakes, pastries, you name it. First thing at mornings and last thing at afternoons, folks rush to Carl and Sons for simply the best. There are two locations, Cole Bay and on the Pondville. In Cole Bay, the opening hours are Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sundays, 6.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Opening hours on the Pondville, Monday to Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 6.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. We also cater for weddings, parties, special events, whatever the occasion. It's Carl and Sons. Our staff, we are always happy to serve you. Call us today, the Colby location, 721 544-2462 That's 721-544-2462 Or in Phillipsburg 721-543-1059 That's 721-543-1059 It's Carl and Sons Bakery We are here to serve you Barbados's Prime Minister is rumored to be a top contender for the United Nations Secretary General position, with selection due in 2026. Despite no official statement, insiders suggest Motley is likely to be favored candidate. With the role historically cycling through different global regions, the next Secretary General is anticipated to hail from Latin America or the Caribbean, favoring Motley's candidacy, as the position has never been held by a woman in its 78 year history. This significant pressure to appoint a female candidate. Motley meets this crucial criterion, standing out among potential candidates. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez voiced his support for Motley, stating, I think she would make a great Secretary General. Whatever she does, I will support her. Motley, who has served as Prime Minister since 2018, is internationally acclaimed for efforts in severing her nation's colonial ties and addressing issues like slavery reparations, climate change, and global financial institution reform. Her candidness and refusal to pander to powerful groups have made her popular choice. One diplomat expressed that they would jump up and down with excitement if she was selected. And that might explain a calculated move by Prime Minister Mia Motley. When she called that snap election, she probably recognized that later on in her career or in her profession, she may have had her eyes on something bigger. Secretary General. So this was probably all planned and we'll see how it goes. And of course, it will not be just an excellent choice. I think that Prime Minister Mia Motley, it is the only choice for that position in 2026. Now let's share some great news. Congratulations to New Vision Lucien York, who has written a book called The Boy with Dyslexia and His Friend, which is on Amazon. Lucien York is a talented young man and youth ambassador for World Literacy Foundation. Lucien was diagnosed with dyslexia at age 7, but was determined to succeed against the odds and has since smashed the proverbial glass ceiling. So in recognition of International Dyslexia Awareness Month, you can pre-order this book on Amazon. The release date is October 8th. The book is on the screen, and I'm asking all of my viewers and listeners to get a copy of this great book. Remember, every time you make a purchase of Lucien's book, you help to give $1 to the World Literacy Foundation to help them with the work that they do across the world. Congratulations once again to Nivision Lucien York. And finally, in a radio program called Issues, hosted by E.K. Flanders on Freedom FM, 13th September, Prime Minister the Honorable Terence Drew referenced a report emanating from an investigation that he commissioned into the financial affairs of the Development Bank of St. Kitts and Nevis. During the seven years of governance of the Team Unity government, the Honorable Prime Minister revealed 
that the findings of the report indicate that in excess of $20 million has gone missing. THG News Today has not independently verified this report, but the Prime Minister read from a report on air that he said was given to him in January of this year. A few days later, a WhatsApp message circulated and forwarded many times by opposition propagandists, stating, Further information has surfaced from development bank employees that approximately $4 to $6 million of the missing $20 million was sent to Nevis via envelopes to the Nevis Reformation Party to help them defeat CCM in the 2022 election. Two employees revealed that they were instructed to take envelopes filled with cash to an NRP high-ranking member on a specific boat prior to the 2022 elections. The Honourable Premier Brantley, less than 24 hours later, posted on his WhatsApp, I am cooking saltfish and thinking the NRP collected 4 to $6 million from Development Bank last election and still lose. I wonder who got the money. Raina come for who got cocoa, a son. Raina come for who got cocoa, a son. Let me say that in the, the dialect where it was said. He also wrote, and again I quote, Which political party and its leader collect all those millions from Development Bank? Well, the Honorable Dr. Daniel Hodge took that, that the Premier Brantley is attempting to accuse herself as the leader of the Nevis Reformation Party of collecting or receiving the benefit of 4 to $6 million from the Development Bank in some scheme to finance the last election. The Honorable NRP leader had this to say. His insinuations are clear. Premier Brantley is attempting to accuse myself as the leader of the Nevis Reformation Party of collecting or receiving the benefit of four to six million dollars from the development bank in some scheme to finance the last election. Let me be as pellucid as possible. Neither the Nevis Reformation Party nor its leadership received funding from the development bank to finance the last election. It is obvious that while the Premier wrestles with the stark reality of his failed attempts of administration and the glaring mismanagement of funds that he may soon be called upon to answer for, the Premier has deployed his usual lame tactic of deception. These allegations put forth by the Premier represent nothing more than a vicious lie, a fable, plotted and meticulously calculated to achieve a single objective, that is, to cast sinister allegations against the NRP in an attempt to ruin our reputation and as honest men and women. I take this as a personal attack on my character as well, and for this I will not stand idly by and ignore. I will instruct my attorneys to take any and all steps to ensure that this narcissistic premier is held accountable for his false accusations. I said to the premier today, enough is enough. And this is where I draw the line. No mistake it easy today. That was the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge. Now, there is so, so much more from this address to the nation, to Nevis and its residents by Dr. Daniel Hodge. So much to talk about. And Nivisions will do a lot of that over the kitchen table and on their WhatsApp over the next week or two. We await to get an official response from the Honorable Mark Brantley, Premier of Nevis. But just one thing on that, though. Um, if the NRP had four to six million dollars for an election, I would think the NRP would be in office, right? Dr. Daniel Hodge, she won by eight even though she had to overcome over 300 votes that the Honorable Alexis Jeffers won the election before. So she had that mountain to climb and won by eight. J.D. Keynes of Charlestown, Nevis won, I think lost by what, 11, 20 something, whatever it is, right? But what I'm saying, if they had four to six million dollars, do you think the Nevis Reformation Party would be out of office right now in opposition? Do you really think so? Do you really think the Honorable Premier would have a seat today if they had four to six million dollars at their disposal for an election? They have been out in opposition since January 2013. Do you really think so? <laughs> Sometimes we just have to 
you know, separate the sense from the nonsense in the political rhetoric and the political campaigns. That's a look at THG News today. I am Mervyn Hanley. I'll be back with you tomorrow morning at six o'clock for a similar presentation. Have a good and blessed day, everyone. <laughs>